Hey y'all, I'm Mandy and this is Mandy in the Making. Today we've got another what's for dinner for you. I've got three different recipes and they are all delicious. I can't wait to share them with you. I know I'm not in the kitchen right now and that's typically where I am and when I'm filming this, that's where I'm at, but Steven's working in the front of the house, Cole is doing school in the front of the house, so I thought I would just come and sit in the guest room for a change of scenery. And I have a guest on the bed with me. She pitched a holy fit for me to pick her up and put her on the bed. She can't jump. She can hardly jump at all. She's 16 years old. Let me flip you around and show you my girl. Gracie Lou, can you say hello? Say this week's meals was pretty good. It had some cheese in it. I approve. Okay, let's get started. Can you tell them let's get started? No cameras, please. Oh, snip it. I have on no makeup and my hair is a hot mess, but it's Saturday for a long weekend. We've been doing things around the house. The guys were working outside. I've been working inside and I wanted to film this video for you or I wanted to film this recipe for you and I just didn't feel like putting on makeup, so... It doesn't get more real than that, right? We're gonna have turkey tenderloins on the grill tonight. If you've watched my grocery hauls, you've seen me talk about these turkey tenderloins before. I get them from Aldi. They are the rotisserie flavored. They are really good, but I've never showed them here on my channel for what's for dinner. So we're gonna show you how we prepare those tonight. We basically just throw them on the grill. But on the side, I'm gonna make some green beans, which I've made those a ton of times on my channel. And then the star of the show, what I really wanna film for you, is I'm going to attempt to make potatoes au gratin. I've never done that before. I found a really simple recipe online, so we're gonna give this a try together. But I'm gonna be quiet so you don't have to keep looking at my face with my makeup. We're gonna give this a shot, let's go. So here's everything I'm gonna need. Um, I don't quite need all of that onion. I'll probably only use about half of that. I am going to peel my potatoes. I think because you're slicing them so thin, you technically could leave the peel on. I've got a two quart dish or like an eight by eight, nine by nine. I don't know which one that is, so we're just gonna go with it. And then I'm gonna be using my grater, but I'm also gonna be using this attachment. I think for maybe the first time, I may have used it once before, but this attachment obviously will be for the potatoes and then I need to also grate some cheese or shred some cheese. So that's how we're getting started. I'm gonna go ahead and peel my potatoes. beautifully. Look at all of those potatoes. That was so easy. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to preheat my oven to 350. I've got this large saucepan, kind of like a pot, pretty much over here. I'm going to add three tablespoons of butter. I've got it on medium low heat. I'm going to let this melt down. Our butter has melted. I'm going to add in three tablespoons of flour and some salt and pepper. Stir that around to combine and then we're going to add in two cups of milk a little bit at a time. I'm also going to pop the heat up to about medium. I'm using whole milk but I'm pretty sure you could just use whatever. 
we just had happened to have an, a little extra whole milk on hand I'd been making some homemade ice cream um, but we had a little leftover so I thought I would use that so I'm just gonna pour combine pour combine okay so this is good and combined but we are going to just stir it pretty frequently and wait for it to come up to a boil okay it's starting to bubble we're going to let it boil for two minutes before we take it off of the heat it's already starting to thicken up that did not take long to thicken up so I turned the heat off we're actually gonna pull it off of this eye and we're gonna add in our diced onions I've got a fourth a cup of diced onions and then two cups of shredded cheese okay just combining all of this letting that cheese melt down then we're gonna add our potatoes in and then we're gonna pour the whole thing into our casserole dish, cover it with full and get it in the oven. My potatoes had been sitting there for like five minutes, 10 minutes maybe, and they were already starting to brown. Don't you hate that? But it's okay. I have got it all stirred in here. Let's put it in the casserole dish. Ooh, but I need to spray my casserole dish with some Pam first. Now that I've got this covered with aluminum foil, I'm gonna put it in the oven at 350 for an hour, and then we will remove the foil and cook it for an additional 20 to 30 minutes. And that's it. Okay, so Steven is gonna go get the grill started. This is what you're looking for when you're at Aldi. It's the rotisserie flavor. They have some other flavors too. I haven't tried those, so I can't attest to those, but this is very good. There's two of them in here, and they are delicious. You like them better than pork tenderloin, don't you, baby? They're really good. They yeah, are. I, I was very surprised that I had no idea what this was going to taste like, but I thought it was, I like them better than I do pork tenderloin. Yeah, I do too. There's not like, it doesn't, I don't know, it's hard to say, but it doesn't, it doesn't taste like what you would think a turkey tenderloin would taste like. No, it's almost, it's more like a steak almost, which is surprising. It's, I don't want to say it's a steak, but... Yeah. And it's actually more tender, in my opinion, than probably any tenderloin I've ever had. Yeah. You know, it's incredibly tender. It is. And it, it, it holds up really well in the grill, too. Yeah. So he's going to get the grill started. He's going to take them out and put them in here. She's going to sit here and beg for whatever it is that she wants to beg for. Gracie Lou, can you say hello? Can you say hey? Gracie Lou, you cannot have that. That is not cheese. I know you hear crinkling. She thinks it's cheese. All right, there we go. He's gonna get the grill started and get these bad boys on there. If you know, you know. If you don't know, I'm gonna have it linked below. I'm a poet and didn't know it. <laughs> okay, so I've got our green beans up to a bowl. Turn them down, let them simmer. And it's been an hour, so it's time to take the foil off of this and then we'll let it cook for 20 more minutes. Mm. 
nice and cheesy. Mm -hmm. What are you eating, Cole? The potatoes? At first, I had the, uh, the turkey. The turkey, but now you're eating the potatoes? Oh, yeah. These are really good, too. Okay, yeah. good. Creamy, love the texture. Soft. Mm -hmm. I know you're dying to get into that turkey tenderloin, oh, baby. It's just, it's just so good. And we don't have to season it or anything. Like we just literally take it out of the package and put it right on the grill. Seriously? Yeah. It's already pre-seasoned, so we don't have to do anything to it. Well, it's seasoned perfectly. I know. It's so good. I didn't think I didn't think anything tenderloin could get better than like a pork tenderloin. Right. I did not think. But wow, was I wrong. This is really good. This so just in case you're wondering why I picked this up one day was right when COVID was kind of starting, we were wanting a pork tenderloin. And when I went to Aldi, all they had was turkey tenderloin. And I was like, all right, we'll, we'll try it. There's no going back, folks. <laughs> Tonight we are having a new casserole. It is called the John Wayne casserole. She didn't say in her post where I found it why it's called John Wayne casserole. I guess I could look that up, but... Anyway, it sounded good and it had a lot of great reviews, so let's get started. Here's almost everything I'm gonna need. I also need to grab some sour cream, but first I'm gonna go ahead and grate up this cheese. spray a 9 by 13 glass dish. It does say when you are putting this in the oven to put a baking dish underneath it. Not a baking dish, a baking pan, sheet, whatever. <laughs> the first part of this process is to grab a 16 ounce can of biscuits, the large biscuits. I have the flaky, I didn't mean for that to happen. The grocery store just gave me flaky, they were out of the other. So we're gonna line the bottom of this pan with these biscuits. Remember when I used to not open those, baby? Yeah, I remember that. I wouldn't open them, I made him open them. It scared me, I didn't like it popping like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're just gonna press these down and kinda up the sides. Let me get them all in there and then I'll figure out exactly how we need to get them. How I need to press them out. That's as good as it's gonna get, folks. <laughs> All right, this is gonna go in a 350 degree oven for 15 to 25 minutes. She said you just want it to kind of brown up a little bit, so I'm gonna start checking it around 15 minutes. While that is in the oven, I've got this large skillet I'm heating to medium high heat. I've got two pounds of ground beef. I'm gonna brown this up. Now that it is browned up, I'm gonna add taco seasoning to it. You would just add just a regular packet, but I um, make my own, and this is actually the very last, like, I have an empty jar over there, so I need to make another batch of it, and I can show y'all how to do that. Just let me know if you want to see that. But I'm going to add this taco seasoning in and add in a little bit of water as well. And I did want to mention that I used 93.7. Well, I think I used 193.7 and 185.15 as far as fat content goes. 
I don't typically drain the fat off when there's not a whole lot and there really wasn't much. Okay, so now I'm going to remove this taco meat and put it here in this bowl and just set it to the side for now. So it said to wipe this out, but I'm not going to because all of this is going into the same thing anyway. I'm gonna put half my onions in this pan to saute them and I'm gonna add my bell peppers and I'm just going to soften these up. Oh, look at those bright colors. That's gonna be good. It's been 20 minutes. Okay, I'm gonna give them just a couple more minutes, but they're starting to brown. Vegetables are sauteing over there. I'm gonna mix half a cup of sour cream with half a cup of mayonnaise. Y'all know this is Duke's mayonnaise. I'm gonna put about half of this cheddar cheese in there. And the remaining onions. Let's mix that up. Bless, it's a little hard, it looks a little wonky, don't it? <laughs> All right, so now it's time to assemble our John Wayne casserole. So on top of our biscuits, we're gonna put our taco meat. Now we're gonna put our tomato slices. Our pepper and onions are gonna go next. Now we're gonna put our jalapeno slices. It said for a four ounce can of sliced jalapenos, but we had a jar, and this was all of the jalapenos we had left in the jar. So it's probably right around four ounces. And these are like pickled jalapenos, so they're not that spicy, but if you wanted to leave this off, I don't think that would be a problem. Now we're gonna put our sour cream mixture on top. This is about to go in the oven for 30 to 40 minutes. Okay, so I'm gonna make some more taco seasoning because that's how much we have left. And it did have the date when I made it on there and I was like, I wonder if, cause I wrote it in, um, what do you call that? Permanent marker. I said, I wonder if this will work and it did. So I'm gonna write the new date on there now and I will show you the recipe. So this recipe came from Jennifer over at A Country Life. I will link her channel and her Instagram below. She shared it on Instagram and put it in a highlight. Um, but I just am gonna reuse this same jar. You just need chili powder, kosher salt, onion powder, garlic powder, and cumin. Okay, so I need a cup and a half of chili powder. Start putting that in there and hopefully not spill it everywhere. I'm gonna make or put some kosher salt in here. I need a fourth a cup of kosher salt. I need two tablespoons of garlic powder. One tablespoon of onion powder. And two tablespoons of cumin. That's it, I'm just gonna put the lid on it and shake it up, and that will last us a good six months or so. There we go, taco seasoning.
It is so easy and it's way better than the stuff you buy in those little packs at the store. That surprised me. It surprised you? That's wow. really, really good. Yeah, that is good. The sour cream. This is like another meal that like caught me off guard regarding taste. It does not taste how you think it will. Well, what did you think it was going to taste like, son? Not this. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. I mean, it's like a taco casserole. If you think about it with the taco meat and everything and the way it's seasoned with the sour cream and all that. And you say it's not too spicy? Okay. Another thing is the crust. Yeah. It's not um, soggy. I mm -hmm. thought it was going to be soggy, but it's mm -hmm. not. It's actually crispy. Okay, okay. good. Okay, y'all. It's our third meal of the week, which means it's Subby Supper Night. Tonight's Subby Supper is called Cajun Sausage and Chicken Pasta, and it comes from Sierra. Sierra said she loves to watch my What's For Dinners, and she also loves to cook. She lives in Salt Lake City. She has a little boy who is six, and she also likes to spend time with not only him, but her fiance as well. She loves anything outdoors, hiking and biking, and she just came up with this recipe all on her own. She kind of threw some things together, and it's become a fan favorite. We're excited to give this one a try, so let's get started. Okay, I have two chicken breasts that I have cubed. I'm going to season these up, and she said in her, um, email that you're supposed to season them and then let them marinate for an hour. We're on a time crunch tonight and I totally forgot to do this ahead of time, so here we are. I'm gonna be seasoning our chicken with some Cajun seasoning. I'm also gonna add some salt and pepper. She did remind me that Cajun seasoning has salt in it, so I'm not gonna have to add a lot of salt. Skillet heated to medium high. I'm going to put in about a tablespoon of butter. Let that melt down. I'm going to add in our chicken. And this is going to saute or it's going to cook all the way through actually. So Sierra mentioned using Mrs. Dash hot and spicy. I could not find that in any of my stores. So she said using a little bit of cayenne pepper would be great too. So I'm not going to add a whole lot, but just a little to kick it up one notch. Do it again, baby. Look, Chef Steven over here. Get it, baby. These are cooked all the way through. I'm gonna set them to the side on this plate. In this same pan, I'm gonna throw in a little more butter. I've got one onion that I've diced and one bell pepper that I've diced. I'm gonna throw that into the pan. We're just gonna saute these for just a couple of minutes just to soften them up. I'm gonna add just a little bit of Cajun seasoning to our veggies as well. Okay, now that these are starting to soften up, I'm gonna throw in a couple of cloves of garlic. I'm just using the pre-minced garlic. Okay, so I brought this water up to a boil. I've got a bag of tortellini that I'm gonna cook in here according to package directions. So I'm gonna boil them for like 10 minutes or so. These are nice and softened. I'm gonna put them over here with the chicken. These are the sausages I'm using today. I went ahead and chopped them up into bite-sized pieces. We're gonna throw them into the pan and just crisp them up just a little bit. Sausage is definitely done. It smells so good in here, y'all. 
we're gonna remove the sausage and just put it over here on that same plate with the chicken and veggies. All of this is gonna get mixed into the sauce in just a minute anyway. In our pan, I'm gonna add a stick of butter. I did turn the heat down just a little bit as well. Our butter is melted. I'm gonna add this entire pint of heavy whipping cream. I'm gonna let this heat through for just a minute before we add our Parmesan cheese. Okay, I've got a whole block of Parmesan cheese. I'm gonna add in and let it start melting. I'm just gonna add a little bit at a time and just make sure it melts down. We're also gonna add some Cajun seasoning to our Alfredo sauce. Almost melted, so let's add the rest of it. All of our cheese is melted. I'm going to start adding in everything that we've already cooked. So all of this goodness is going in. Oh, we got to add in our tortellini. Yeah. Ready to eat, baby? Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Okay, let's eat. As if that couldn't be enough. <laughs> I had a little bit of bacon left on hand, so I cooked that up a little earlier and crumbled it up. We're just gonna add that on top because y'all know everything's better with bacon. Mm -hmm. Oh, I threw some out, baby. You gonna eat it, ain't you? Yep. <laughs> mm -mm. You need to speed this up a little bit. I need to speed it up. Why? Because you're hungry. Oh yeah. Gosh, this looks good. Okay. He couldn't contain himself and he had to start eating before I even got the camera. I was picking up the camera and he was already putting it in his face. <laughs> what do you think? I don't even know if there's a words to describe this. All I can say is if you don't like spice, you're not gonna like this meal. Yeah. But it is outstanding. <laughs> Like, I mean, this is the kind of meal I like to eat. You know I love spicy stuff to begin with, and this is incredible. So it's very much Cajun. Yeah. I mean, you definitely get well, the Cajun Well, that sausage, flavor. for yeah. sure. So mm -hmm. if you don't like spice, I think you could do this without that, and you could do like a oh. different type of sausage mm -hmm. and just leave the Cajun part out. Cole I, saying yes, but Steven oh, saying no. <laughs> This isn't overpowering enough. Good. Like at all. Well, if it's not overpowering for you, then it's it might not be as bad as. Right. I think this is probably the, the spiciest subby sub, but this is incredible. The, the flavors are tremendous. Well, I am really excited to give this a try. I'm about to dig in. Thank you, Sierra, for sending over your family's favorite. We are excited that we have a new dish. To love. You want me to make this one again, baby? Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> I've had several bites of this, and while it is a little spicy, it is definitely not over the top. I think I could have added more to make it even spicier. So if you're a little scared of this one, the amount of seasonings that I added, I feel like is perfect because it's got some heat to it, but it's not like, oh my gosh, I need to drink something right now hot. I hope that helps. Thank y'all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching it. I know you didn't enjoy watching it as much as we enjoyed eating it because it was good, but I hope you'll give me a thumbs up if you were excited to try at least one of the meals. I hope you'll try all three. They were all great. And even that last one, if you're not a Spice fan, I really feel like you can adjust it to your liking. Don't skip out on that one. It was phenomenal. Um, if you haven't already, I would love for you to join my YouTube family. Don't forget to hit that red subscribe button before you leave. I do videos like this 
all the time. And yeah, that's it. I'll see y'all next time. Bye. Yes. I know you record me. <laughs> Parmesan cheese is the best. Mm. You want some more? I'll give you the little pieces. What? <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> he's following me like he's got the camera right in my face. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what was that? What was that? Stop. Look at that messy kitchen. Stop. <laughs>